Zhang acknowledged the incredible speed and power of the undead tyrant's attacks. As the monstrous creature lifted its mace from the ground and prepared to strike, Zhang likened it to a rampaging bull beyond control. However, he recognized this frenzy as a potential weakness. Meanwhile, Little Nine attempted to assail the undead tyrant with her sharp tentacles, but the creature countered by spinning its body at high speed, effortlessly evading her attacks and gaining momentum. Advancing rapidly, the undead tyrant closed in on Zhang. Within moments, it launched itself into a mighty leap. Zhang raised his gaze toward the approaching creature, realizing the impending danger. He had sensed it before. There were numerous hidden passages beneath the ground. As the undead tyrant soared through the air, it seized its mace with both hands, swiftly closing the distance toward Zhang. As the undead tyrant closed in for an attack, Zhang observed its gradual approach, waiting for the opportune moment he prepared to employ his talent to halt its advance. When the undead tyrant drew near enough, Jung focused intently, determining that the time was right. Extending his hand toward the ground, a green symbol materialized in his palm. Harnessing his talent, Jiang summoned the concealed spiritual roots from beneath the ground. With his gaze fixed upon the undead tyrant, he directed his hand towards it with determination. In mere moments, four spiritual roots emerged from the earth, lancing toward the undead tyrant, piercing its body. The roots ensnared the creature in midair, immobilizing it completely. With his hand outstretched and his body enveloped in a potent aura, Jiang directed his attention to Little Nine, signaling that it was her moment to act. Swiftly, Little Nine approached the undead tyrant, her hand landing on its head, while her other hand readied her claws. Fixing the creature with a deadly glare, she affirmed her understanding to Jiang with a resolute, understood master, as Little Nine prepared to strike. The undead tyrant's expression shifted dramatically, sensing impending danger. Despite its attempts to defend itself, it proved futile. In a swift motion, Little Nine surged forward, her sharp claws and tentacles slashing through the air. With precision, she pierced the creature's body, cleaving it in half and obliterating the spiritual roots in the process. Within moments, the lifeless form of the undead tyrant crumpled to the ground. Zhang, with his hands still raised towards the sky, maintained control over both the spiritual roots and the tyrant's corpse. A sense of pride swelled within him at his victory over the formidable foe. Knowing that his ability was reliable, Jiang felt reassured that he could continue to be a formidable force in battles as long as he utilized his skills effectively. Lost in contemplation, Jiang was interrupted by a system notification indicating that the growth acceleration was now on an eight-hour cooldown. Consequently, the spiritual roots began to diminish gradually. Moments later, the core materialized from the undead tyrant's corpse. Recognizing its significance, Jiang swiftly resolved to destroy it without delay. In a swift motion, Jiang intercepted the core before it could escape, seizing it firmly in his grasp. With determination, he clenched his fist tightly, causing the core to fracture into pieces. As the shards descended to the earth, Jiang fixed his gaze upon his clenched fist, harboring a resolute expression as he contemplated that this marked the conclusion, amidst the aftermath. A flurry of system notifications cascaded, heralding Jiang's triumph in clearing the C-rank secret realm, known as the Temple of the Undead. Swiftly, the system computed his contributions, culminating in the successful generation of the Secret Realm score. Despite starting at level zero and bearing the class of Spiritual Master, Jiang Cheng achieved an impressive S rating in this Secret Realm. Wang Yi, a level 12 swordsman, secured a B rating while Liu Yang, a level 11 warlock, achieved an A rating. Yi Qian, a level 10 boxer, also earned a B rating. As the heavenly system commenced the computation of team rewards, a window materialized before Zhang, signaling the forthcoming rewards. After a brief pause, the system completed the generation of team rewards, prolonging the window's appearance. Zhang was presented with several weapon options to consider. The first was a dagger followed by a scepter, then a heavy axe, a lighter axe, and finally a hammer. As the spiritual root gradually receded into the ground, Zhang found himself gazing at the system window, lost in contemplation for several moments. He reached into the system window and selected the dagger. As he retrieved the weapon, its statistics became visible. It was Edmu's Swift Dagger, Rank D, providing the user with 50 attack points and a 5% speed bonus. The dagger was associated with swords and offered two professional attributes, 
Inspecting the blade with one hand, Jiang found it satisfactory and resolved to offer it as recompense for Uncle Wang. His gaze shifted to the array of equipment displayed in the system window. It dawned on him quickly that all the gear catered to combat needs. Uncertain if there was anything tailored for creation classes, Zhang leaned closer to the system window. He reached in and began scrutinizing the attributes of each item. Opting for the hammer, he extracted it from the system, but upon lifting it, the weight caused it to slip from his grasp, thudding heavily onto the ground. The hammer, dubbed Call of the King, bestowed upon the user a formidable 100 strength points, albeit at the cost of deducting 100 agility points due to its heft. Its unique attribute allowed for a 10% chance to trigger critical damage amplified fivefold. As Zhang struggled to hoist the hammer, he sensed a novel feeling creeping over him. A notification popped up, indicating that he was receiving experience points as a reward. Zhang swiftly comprehended that the system was granting him the experience gained from the secret realm. Despite the hammer's weight, Zhang felt the newfound experience gradually empowering him to lift it. In mere moments, he effortlessly hoisted the hammer, as if it weighed nothing. Another notification from the system revealed that the United ability was activated, boosting all of Jiang's attributes by 20%. Surrounded by a potent aura, he held the hammer in one hand, while casually slipping the other into his pocket, his gaze fixed on the hammer. Benefiting from the passive ability of the insect mother, he had ascended to level 6, enhancing the potency of the United effect. With each level gained, he noticed a marked improvement in his physical combat prowess. Lost in contemplation, Jiang was drawn back to the present as Little Nine tugged at his shirt, demanding his attention. Jiang's reverie was interrupted by Little Nine's voice. She gestured towards the system window, inquiring if she could consume all the rewards. Setting the hammer down, Jiang met her gaze, contemplating her request for a moment. Turning towards her, Jiang explained that the equipment wasn't edible for Little Nine. It was meant for Uncle Wang and the others to trade for money. He warned her that eating it would give her a stomachache. Little Nine, upon hearing this, dropped one hand behind her back and touched her lips with the other, her expression shifting to one of sadness as she looked at Jiang. Turning her body towards the undead tyrant's corpse, Little Nine inquired if she could consume it. Jiang realized he had overlooked the value of devouring the remains of the boss. Surrounded by a potent aura, he nodded and granted Little Nine permission to devour it. Recognizing that it rightfully belonged to her, Little Nine wasted no time in approaching the colossal corpse of the undead tyrant. Observing its immense size, Jiang couldn't help but wonder if the boss was perhaps too large. Considering its bulk, he speculated that it might take Little Nine quite some time to corrode it using her poisonous mist. Little Nine stretched her arms wide, closed her eyes, and informed Jiang that she was about to feast. Instantly, her body began to tremble, reverting to her natural state within moments. Once transformed, she fixed the undead tyrant's corpse with an intense, predatory stare, her mouth opening as she moved closer to it. Despite the colossal size of the undead tyrant's corpse, it appeared minuscule compared to the mother insect's natural form. Jiang watched in awe as she reverted to her original state to consume the corpse, a sight that filled him with dread. With her mouth agape, she charged toward the boss remains, emitting a series of ferocious roars as she approached. As Little Nine devoured the corpse, a powerful gust of wind swept through the area. Jiang seized the opportunity to retrieve all the equipment from the system window. With one hand clutching the hammer, he shielded his face from the wind generated by Little Nine's roaring. Although the noise was deafening, they were fortunate to be within the confines of the secret realm. Had this occurred in the bustling main city, their actions would have undoubtedly attracted unwanted attention, regardless of their efforts to conceal themselves. Upon finishing the feast, a system notification emerged, awarding John with 400 devouring points. As he shielded his face with his arm, John noticed that the devouring value was escalating at a rapid pace. As anticipated, the boss's meat indeed held unique value. Jiang understood that consuming more boss-type monsters was imperative to boost the devouring value further. Lost in contemplation, he was suddenly alerted by approaching footsteps. Swiveling around, he gritted his teeth upon realizing that Uncle Wang and the others were drawing near, likely drawn by the commotion caused by Little Nine. With the devouring value standing at 8, 876 points, Jiang approached Little Nine and urged her to revert to her other form swiftly. Little Nine's smile faded slightly as she complied with his request, 
a hint of regret in her expression. Zhang felt a pang of disappointment knowing that the devouring value was tantalizingly close to being maxed out. Within moments, Uncle Wang and the others reached their location. As Uncle Wang noticed the equipment scattered on the ground, he understood that Jiang had successfully completed the level. Jiang clarified to Uncle Wang the situation with his broken sword, presenting him with the dagger as compensation. Uncle Wang accepted the dagger readily, acknowledging its rarity. He assured Zhang that he wouldn't hold him responsible for the damage to his equipment. Approaching Zhang, Uncle Wang revealed that the necklace was another valuable item, worth a considerable sum if sold. Yi Qian, intrigued, inquired how Jiang had managed to defeat the boss single-handedly. Jiang scratched his head sheepishly and explained that his poison appeared to have a particularly potent effect on formidable monsters like the boss. With a solemn expression, Jiang directed his gaze downwards. The secret realm had been thoroughly conquered, but once a secret realm was cleared, it wouldn't reset. Acquiring the devouring value from another boss would be crucial to kick-starting the insect swarm breeding. If Jiang aimed to encounter a new boss, his only option was to venture into the desert. Observing Jiang, Uncle Wang expressed regret that Jiang was destined for the research department. Despite not even reaching level 1, he had already vanquished a boss monster, suggesting significant potential for strength once he leveled up. After sharing his thoughts, Uncle Wang inquired about Jiang's future plans. Turning towards Uncle Wang, Jiang smiled and revealed that he hadn't mentioned it earlier to avoid causing worry. In truth, he had decided to join the Night's Watch. Surprised, Uncle Wang sought confirmation. Questioning Zhang's sincerity in his decision, Zhang nodded, affirming his intention to join the Night's Watch. Zhang disclosed his plan to depart for the Night's Watch in three days' time. Before his departure, he aimed to boost his level, intending to venture into the wilderness for further leveling. Uncle Wang's astonishment was evident. While Yi Qian reacted with disbelief, her hand covering her mouth at the thought of Zhang embarking on such a perilous endeavor. As Liu Yang extended her hand towards him, her expression grave with concern, Zhang interrupted her, his fist clenched tightly. In response, Little Nine's poisonous mist began to emanate from the palm of his hand, a silent testament to his determination. Assuring Liu Yang not to worry about him, Zhang expressed confidence in his abilities and urged them to focus their concerns on the looming threat of the monsters. Later that day, Zhang boarded the train, arriving at the city's outskirts a few hours later. Prompted by the conductor, those bound for the wilderness disembarked the train. Stepping off the train, Zhang wrapped himself in a cloak to blend into the crowd, keen on avoiding undue attention. Pausing to survey his surroundings, his gaze fixed on a bustling bridge teeming with awakeners. Since awakening the system, Zhang found his appetite strangely heightened. What astonished him even more was that despite its instability, his devouring value exhibited a slight uptick with each meal. As Jiang nibbled on a loaf of bread, his devouring value incremented by two points. Little Nine materialized beside him, grimacing at the bread as she commented on its lack of flavor. He determined to find her something more palatable, Jiang resolved to seek out a suitable meal for Little Nine. With a gesture, he conjured a map and unfolded it before Little Nine. The generosity of Uncle Wang surprised him. Not only had he provided the map, but also a crucial storage ring and additional guidance upon learning of Jiang's journey to the desert. These provisions proved invaluable to Jiang. He ventured forth across the bridge, mindful of Uncle Wang's counsel. In the wilderness, the influence of the Heavenly Way rendered electronic devices useless, akin to an apocalyptic landscape where monsters roamed freely, migrating to their nests without restraint. The maps provided had a fleeting utility. Devoid of updated intelligence, locating monster clusters, let alone bosses, posed a formidable challenge. Creatures like firebirds and thunder rhinoceroses, conspicuous in their movements, were among the most prevalent. Areas marked with question marks were to be steered clear of, deemed perilous nests with elevated risk levels. Uncle Wang had advised Zong that the Goblin Dungeon would be the most fitting choice. Low-leveled, abundant in monsters, and less crowded. As Jiang scrutinized the map, he tightened his fist, sporting a smile resolved to embark on the journey. However, amidst his contemplations, a voice abruptly interrupted, commanding him to halt. Jiang tensed up, swiveling around to face the source of the voice. A cloaked figure stood before him, hand resting firmly on Jiang's shoulder. 
Eyes fixated with intensity, he questioned why Zhang had ignored his calls, expressing a desire to inquire about something important. The cloaked man inquired if Zhang had spotted a girl with golden hair nearby. Zhang's gaze sharpened, and he denied seeing anyone fitting that description, cautioning the man to mind his words. Simultaneously, Little Nine's poisonous mist began to emit from Zhang's shoulder, adhering to the man's hand. The cloaked man swiftly withdrew his hand from Jiang's shoulder, a perplexed expression crossing his face. Examining his hand, he clenched his teeth, pondering if this substance was poison. He found it puzzling, as Jiang didn't appear to have reached a level capable of such an attack. Nonetheless, he remained unperturbed, knowing that Jiang at his current level couldn't pose a threat to him, a level 27 main defense warrior. With a dismissive gesture, Jiang turned his back and walked away, advising the man to seek a healer promptly, cautioning him about the severity of the poison. He added a word of caution about maintaining vigilance. Despite Jiang's departure, the man couldn't contain his anger, demanding Jiang's attention and questioning his authority to leave. Hearing this, Zhang fixed his gaze on the man, his expression turning fierce. As the man approached, emanating a formidable aura, he leveled a penetrating stare at Zhang, questioning his audacity in crossing paths with the Xiao family. Zhang's mind raced, contemplating if the man was alluding to the Yao family from the Battle of Heaven.